um, Christina Angolia here, president of, of Mode Foundation. We're affiliated with Mode. Um, like many people in this room, when I first saw the pictures that Ms. Wade described of the four by seven, what looked like closets that are used for seclusion at the core building, I didn't sleep for a week. Um, as a mother of a child with disabilities, I can easily imagine my daughter one, be, one day being one of those students. When a school builds something like these, they will be used and they are intended to be used frequently as is evidenced by the fact that there are two of these rooms. As Ms. Wade said, if these are in fact for dangerous situations that have escalated to a point where nothing else can intervene, I have a big question for you to ask why are Columbia students being put in these rooms so frequently that you need two of them and that we know students have been put in them already. If you're having crisis situations on a daily basis that require two rooms, you might wonder if in fact these are being used just in crisis situations. Um, we have heard reports of children being locked in there for misbehavior. We, because people come to us as advocates. We have heard reports of children being denied access to bathrooms while locked in. We have also heard that catapult representatives neither know the CPS policy nor the difference between seclusion, isolation, and timeout. This was via a tour given to representatives. How can they put our children in rooms the size of solitary confinement cells and not know whether they are breaking policy? How then can a district spokesperson contend that no laws or policies are being broken? A child's life could be at stake. Policy needs to be crystal clear and all staff, whether CPS or Catapult or whoever, need to know how to implement it. In addition, the version of JGGA that you are considering tonight must not be passed. Although I appreciate where the draft policy has been strengthened to, in terms of pa parental reporting, um, I am deeply concerned, as Robin Shelp is, about this uh, addition of the word unattended. It creates a critical loophole that could be dangerous. I'd also add that the 10 business days to send an official report to parents is much too long. While I appreciate what Dr. Siepelman said, that Parents can call in at any time and get information. You and I both know that when you're in an emotional state and you're calling and getting information piecemeal, it is very different than getting a written document where it's clear what happened, by whom, and when. Five business days is plenty, and it is in line with the Mo Desi model policy, which is still much stronger than the policy before us tonight, which I'm disappointed to say. Finally, Mode Foundation is concerned that the policy states that annual training is no longer going to be requ required for staff. Given that children die in restraint and seclusion rooms across the country every year, given that it is allegedly a last resort, given that we have these four by seven rooms that children with disabilities are being locked in, your staff needs more training, not less. Thank you.